Uh, nope. We just... That's fine. Good morning, everybody. Those of you who are joining us on site and online, I'm going to be a disembodied voice here for just a moment <laughs> because the computer that I am on is uh, deciding to be temperamental this morning. Zoom is maybe connecting, maybe. But it's good to have you all with us, whether you are joining us on site at Grace, on site at Holy Communion, or uh, on the internet, on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, any of those options. We are so glad that you are here this morning and hope that you um, hear a little bit of the good news of Jesus Christ uh, this day that we have to share with one another. I should be back up and ready to be seen. There I am. It is good to have you all with us. Good to see you all that are at Holy Communion. I'm going to add the spotlight just so that I can see real quick. Hi. Good to see you all. Hi to everybody in Grace's Sanctuary too. I'm just, you know, I'll be out in a second. Let us, um, well, we got a couple minutes. So if you are joining us uh, for the first time or for the first time in a while, um, just a reminder that you can download our bulletin off of the news and upcoming events page, um, either at gracelutheranchesapeake.org or at hcport.com. Um, both congregations' websites have a news and upcoming events page, uh, and there is a version or multiple versions of the bulletin and the announcement sheet posted on both of them. Uh, so on the Grace one, there is a very simple bulletin, and there is a totally complete bulletin and, it's, and Grace's announcement sheet. And then on Holy Communion, there is kind of a, a hybrid, um, has everything, uh, includes the readings, but does not include the music. Uh, so you'll need an Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Um, and then that announcement sheet. It's just showing the variety uh, that exists within our unity as the church. We uh, love that we get to live into that in this uh, new thing that we are calling Simul Worship. Uh, so that we are gathered on site in two places and across the internet um, over space and time because some of you are not watching live uh, but you are welcome to join us live um, by watching on zoom there will be able to uh, see you and hear you um, if you unmute and then um, also uh, in, you can participate with people in the chat but regardless of whatever platform you're on we encourage you to use the chat function or the comment function um, whether that be in facebook or youtube or in zoom okay you're probably already tired of listening to me and i am not done talking for today so i invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude Mm. 
Please stand as you are able. Can y'all hear me in here? Yes. Okay. We've been messing with sound so much, I always question. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me at Holy Communion and on Zoom, and if you can't, let Savannah know and she'll let me know or fix it herself. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal one, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth that we may live just and generous life for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once and for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, which is number 624 from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. <clears throat> Jesus still lead on till our rest be won. All through through the will be cheerless. We will follow, calm and fearless. Guide us by your hand to the promised land. If the way be drear, if the foe be take us let not faith and hope forsake us should we pass your foe to our home we go we we seek relief till our rest we grieve when temptation comes alluring make us patient and enduring show a where we weep no more Jesus still lead on till our rest be won heavenly leaders still direct us still support and so protect us guide we we stand in the promised land The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom come and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our readings.
A reading from Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing Psalm 16 responsively by verse as translated in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. You are my Lord, my God above all other. My delight is in the godly that are in the land. land. The, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O oh Lord, you're my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he had sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified, and the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, 
let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus uh, began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite our youth and young at heart to come forward at this time. I know there's a couple of other little little legs that we are waiting for. Savannah, could you uh, also spotlight Holy Communion for me, please? There they are. Hi, guys. Maybe little legs are coming. Are they occupied? Seems like it. Okay, Lily, I think it's just you and me. <laughs> Big eyes. Okay, so now, really, it's just going to be all of us. So, all of you must participate today. We all are young at heart in one way or another, right? So, how are your, how are your weeks? Good weeks, bad weeks, so-so, one of each? I'm seeing a lot of, like, really, like, exuberant thumbs up and then some really... <laughs> <laughs> Some really hesitant thumbs down if that doesn't speak volumes. Anybody have a highlight they want to share? Back at work. Back at work. Thanks be to God. Any other, any other highlights? This is my longtime best friend visiting from North Carolina. Yay, best friend visiting. They're coming. Little legs are coming. Hey, bud. Oh, 
<laughs> and I, I had already proclaimed we were all being young at heart today. How are your weeks? Did you guys have good weeks? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Uh-oh. I got a thumb down. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> For your old attitude. Anybody have a highlight they want to share? What's your highlight? I, I was playing here. Did you, were you having fun playing here? That's a highlight of your week. I am so glad to hear that. Any other highlights to share? Yeah, what's your highlight? I made new friends. You made new friends? Awesome! I love to hear that too. You want to sit next to me? Okay, you're not going to be able to see the pictures very good. We're going to read a story from the Bible that comes right up. Did you want to share a highlight? What? I, I want to play in the pool. You want to play in the pool? That's your highlight from the week? Okay. It's a little chilly, bud. So this is a story um, towards the end of Jesus' life. So let's put on our listening ears and our eyes up here. Um, If we're trying to find it in uh, Spark Story Bible at Holy Communion, it's called Be Ready. And in my version, it's on page 346. I can see Natalie furiously flipping. I think that's a thumbs up. Okay. Jesus was walking in Jerusalem with his disciples when one of them pointed at a tower of heavy stones being used to build a temple. Look, the disciples said, what huge stones, what large buildings. Jesus stopped and said, you see these big towers of stone? Someday, all these stones will fall down. Not one of them will remain standing. Peter and the other disciples were confused. The temple wasn't even finished yet. What would make it fall down? They began to worry. When will this happen? Peter asked Jesus. Jesus paused and smiled kindly and to, at his friends. Do not be afraid, Jesus said. Watch and wait. Be ready. Even when scary things happen, God is working for good. Jesus told them this to comfort them. Jesus knew that trouble was coming, and soon Jesus would die on the cross. Have you guys ever had anything scary happen in your life? No. Never? Well, I'm glad to hear that. I, I hate to burst the bubble. Is this what you do when a scary thing happens? Is this what brings you comfort? Yeah. Yep. You got to do what you got to do. Hopefully, today's story and other sayings from Jesus can be like crawling into your mama's lap and getting a snuggle, that they can comfort you, that even when scary things happen, God is with you and says, do not be afraid. Can you say that? Do not be afraid. One more time with confidence. Do not be afraid, because God loves you no matter what. Thanks for coming up. You got to go, bud. Would you like a hug? Squeeze. Okay, up. Let us pray together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As happens every year, as we approach the end of the church year, remember next Sunday is the last Sunday of the church year, and then prepare for the Sunday after, which is the beginning of the new church year, and we always start with the season of Advent. The lectionary starts the apocalyptic tone of Advent early. 
The Greek word apocalypse means an uncovering, a revealing, an unveiling, and has come to be associated specifically with talk about the end of the world, and an uncovering, an unveiling, a revealing of what that will look like. And that's exactly what we get today in our lectionary texts. In the book of Daniel, we hear of a dream depicting the end of the world. And then in the Gospel of Mark, we hear Jesus talk about the destruction of the temple, which to the Israelites at the time would have felt like the end of the world. But also he talks about the coming of the Son of Man. Now, the third famous example of apocalyptic literature in the Bible is, of course, the book of Revelation, which we are not reading from today. <laughs> what struck me this week about those apocalypses that we did read from Daniel and from Mark are less how the two are similar and instead how they really are quite different different. Now, let's start with the similarities. They're both apocalypses, right? Like talk about the end time, but they agree that the timing of that is unknown. It is kept covered and hidden and secret. Some things are revealed, but not everything. They agree that it will be like, it would include great war and destruction, that, and that will lead up to the end of the world as we know it. But here is how they differ. In Daniel, it is very specific that it is, there is this promised great prince named Daniel who will rise to power and offer protection and deliverance to Daniel's people, those, quote, written in the book. In Mark, however, it's a, it's a little vague about who the deliverer will be, Ultimately, we know, because we know the rest of the rest of the story, um, that Jesus, being the Son of Man, is that one who will come again. But instead of focusing on, hey guys, it's me, I'll be back, Jesus simply warns that many will claim to be him and will lead people astray. It does not say in this morning's uh, pericope um, any more than they'll just pretend to be me. But later in the chapter, we hear more about the Son of Man, the Messiah, which we know to be Jesus himself. He warns of false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect, before the Son of Man can send angels to gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. But as Jesus has been trying to teach his disciples throughout his ministry, the signs and wonders are not the point. They help us to pay attention. They might even teach us something when they are interpreted, but the signs and the wonders are not themselves the point. Now, Jesus did perform signs at the beginning of his ministry, kind of to get people's attention, to gain some credibility, but his true ministry was more about the teaching about the kingdom of God than it is about the wonders themselves. He is more than the sum of his healings and his exorcisms and his other signs and wonders and miracles. The disciples, the Markin community, and we all today seem to struggle with this sometimes. We get caught up on the signs and wonders. We kind of stop there instead of using those as a launching off point to what Jesus is really all about. 
we too easily get distracted by miracles. We are too easily get lured by promises of personal prosperity. We too are easily are convinced by have truths or even flat out lies when they support the narrative that we have concocted and want to believe is true. We are too easily turned against one another and we build walls up between the us and them instead of recognizing the image of God and in each and every one of our neighbors. It is our fight, flight, or freeze response at its worst. When things get scary, when we feel threatened, we devolve into the reptilian part of our brain and our behavior changes. It is this sin and brokenness that leads to nation rising against nation. It's what leads to war and division and famine and oppression. When we devolve into this state of thinking, of being, of living, we can only see each other as competitors or even enemies instead of the truth, which is we are siblings in Christ. But thankfully, it's not actually all up to us. Thankfully, even though we might get stuck there, Jesus reminds us that God is ultimately in control and that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, the end is not actually the end. It might be the end of things as we know it, but really, it's just a new beginning. All of this scary stuff that is foretold is the beginning of the birth pangs. And if you have ever given birth or been in the room with somebody given birth, you know it gets worse before it gets better. It's a new beginning. That is what we can put our hope in. That God is in charge and that God has declared that there will be an end to this existence, to this world order, to this age of sin and brokenness, and there will be eternal abundant life for all. So this week, I pray that we make, take some advice from the letter to the Hebrews on how to spend the time that we have left in this current reality. Because we are not called to simply sit around and bide our time and twiddle our thumbs, knowing that God is in charge and God will take care of it all. No. Instead, we are encouraged let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. For even though we don't exactly know when, the day is approaching. But also, it is just the good and faithful thing to do in response to God's love and promises. It is the walk of discipleship. To live in light of that promise from God. To live filled with hope when everything else suggests that we should just despair. In our God. In our Savior, Jesus Christ, we have a hope that cannot be overshadowed. Let us remember this. Hold on to it with every fiber of our being. And live in the, 
in light of it, in response to it. Let us stay focused on what we know for sure, especially when we are reminded of all that we don't know for sure. And in the words of Hebrews, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together our song of the day, which comes also from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal, number 713, O God of Every Nation. O God of every nation, of every and land redeem your whole creation with your almighty hand where hate and fear divide us and bitter threats are hurled in love and mercy guide us and heal our strife worn world for search Trust in bombs that shower destruction through the night. From pride of race and station, let blindness do your way. Deliver every nation, eternal God, we pray. Lord, strengthen all who labor that of rattling saber, from dread of war's increase. When hope and courage falter, Lord, let your voice be heard. With faith that none can alter, your servants undergird. Keep right in us the vision of days when war shall cease, when hatred and division give way to love and peace, till dawns the morning glorious, when truth and love shall reign, and Christ shall make victorious for all the With the whole world, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all the baptized in the covenant you have made with us as we strive for your justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your merciful might, you sustain all creation. Stir us from complacency with the harm we inflict on the earth and urge us to adopt sustainable ways of life that protect and restore our planet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With the selfless power, you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or affected by war or violence. Empower all people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In your presence, you give fullness of joy. Care for all for whom joy feels distant. Be present with persons experience depression, anxiety, addiction, or any mental illness. We pray especially for those listed on our prayer lists and those we name now aloud or silently. Bring them healing and wholeness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember saints and angels who delight in your everlasting presence. As their lives inspire ours, provoke us always to love, holding fast to the confession of our hope in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace to all of you who are joining us online. Good to see you, Walt, Jean, Jerry, Beverly, Mary, Mo, Eric, Vicki, Doreen, Anne, Mike, Tara, and Chris. Peace to you all. And peace to all of those of you at Holy Communion. Peace. I will see you soon for lots of yummy food. Peace. If you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to share the peace in the comment section or share this video with somebody who needs to hear a little bit of Jesus' uh, peace and God's good news for them.
Each week during worship, we take time to acknowledge and remember that all that we have is a gift from God, our time, our talent, our treasure, all of it. And we can use those gifts to do God's work in the world, even though the end is coming, right? There is still work to be done. And we can use our gifts to do that work, to feed the hungry, to house the homeless, to, to clothe the naked, to comfort the afflicted. The list goes on and on. And that is what we strive to do here at Grace in Chesapeake and at Holy Communion in Portsmouth, to be Christ to our neighbors. All financial gifts that are shared with us go to that end. You can use the QR codes on your screen for either congregation, uh, or you can physically turn in cash or check in the offering plate in the sanctuary at both locations or to the office through the mail. We are thankful for gifts of every size and frequency and for your further partnership in doing God's work in the world. Thank you, and I encourage you to give thanks to God for all that you have been given by sharing those gifts with others. Keeping all of those ways that we use God's gifts in the world uh, to do God's work, I invite Rich to pray our offering prayer. Please stand as you are able in body or spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our portion and our cup, you offered yourself in love for the world, and in this meal you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance, that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. And also with you, we lift them to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you worship the land, nourish the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. And also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming. When the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send us and this send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this heavenly food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, God is making all things new. Take your place in the new creation. For those of you who will be communing from your homes or from your pews, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you break the chains of hatred and fear. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you are the way of justice and peace. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you are the way of mercy and love. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, grant us. Bread of life. 
life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Break now the bread of Christ's sacrifice, giving thanks, hungry ones gather round. All of you and be satisfied in Christ's presence, the loaves will abound. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Seek not the food that will pass away. Set your hearts on the food that endures. Eat all of you in the living way, that the fullness of life may be yours. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body bread and drink this cup until you come again. Love as the one who in love for you gave himself for the life of the world. Come to the one who is food for you that your hunger and thirst be no more. Bread blood and body given. We beat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Dwell in the one who now dwells in you. Make your home in the life-giving word. Know only Christ, Holy One of God, and believe the truth you have heard. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Drink of this cup and declare his death. Eat this bread and believe Easter morn. Trust his return and with every bread raise the one in whom you are reborn. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Please stand as you are able in body or spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The ancient one enthroned, the crucified one now risen, the indwelling one poured out. Bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. If, can we uh, spotlight Holy Communion as well? I'm going to attempt to cover both, if y'all would not mute me at Holy Communion. Um, 
I just think it helps us to share our ministries here, what's going on. You're always welcome uh, to participate in either one. If you guys want to come line up, I see the excitement. There is a lot going on in the next month and a half. Um, so we are going to just let y'all co come to the blue mark. Make Savannah's job a little easier. So as we prepare for Christmas, uh, the uh, annual Messiah is being um, performed this Friday, Handel's Messiah, the Christmas section, at Great Bridge United Methodist Church on South Battlefield, 7 o'clock. It's a really great performance. Try to make it if you can. Uh, your Grace Lutheran can you food. can you talk oh, into it? Okay. Thanks. Your Grace Lutheran Food Pantry is currently making preparations to distribute um, holiday food baskets to people in the community here. So we're currently collecting items for that. There is a list in the um, announcements today, and also on the scoop. If you'd be willing to go donate any of these items, we very much appreciate it. Of course, you don't have to go by that list. All food is appreciated. Thank you. And also, I want to invite anyone, if you're interested in helping us with this outreach ministry, you know, please come on a Monday or a Friday or contact me to find out more information. You know, we'd love to have more volunteers, at least to be on call even, too. Thank you. Thank you. And a note about Holy Communion. We, Holy Communion is doing, and we'll share the, the spotlight okay. for a second. Um, Holy Communion is putting together a Thanksgiving basket for a neighborhood family. Those donations are due today. So, if you're at Holy Communion and you forgot, they're due today. <laughs> Go for it, Nancy. I want to thank everybody who has brought in the toys. It's been great. And for those that haven't, the box is still here. Be here all week. And next Sunday, last day, I'm collecting. But again, thank you always for your outreach. Just wanted to let the ladies of the church Can know. You hold it up. Thank you. Ladies of the church know we'll be having the um, annual Christmas party, the ladies' Christmas lunch on December 7th. And um, there'll be a sign up sheet tomorrow. Tomorrow for uh, signing up what to bring. And also, uh, we'll be doing like a $5 or below gift exchange. So that'll be, and we're going to have music and different things. So. Please come and sign up. Thanks. More information will be in all of the uh, announcement means, communication modes uh, this coming week, and that sign, sign up will be up tomorrow. Um, before the ladies' Christmas lunch, don't forget that November's ladies' lunch is this week on Wednesday at noon at the Sunrise Pizzeria. Uh, the sign up for that is out in the narthex. Uh, join us if you are able. Um, if you can sign up, it is helpful so we know um, how many to warn them are, co are coming. <laughs> okay, a couple, a lot's going on, like I said. So first of all, this afternoon, at, well, not afternoon, at noon, at Holy Communion, we're having a Thanksgiving potluck. Uh, even if you did not sign up, if you want to come eat with us, you know that there's going to be enough food. So come join us at Holy Communion in Portsmouth at noon for Thanksgiving potluck today. A uh, quilt raffle, today is the last day here at Grace. If you want to see that quilt, it is out in the narthex. Um, and you can buy tickets uh, from Kathy, and a drawing will happen after, after worship. Last-minute tickets and then a drawing. All of that money raised will be going to Lutheran Disaster Response for Hurricane Relief in North Carolina and the surrounding areas. Uh, this week on Thursday at 1 is the last of our neighborhood walks at Holy Communion. Uh, so you are encouraged to join us at 1 o'clock. We will uh, do another loop through the neighborhood as we can uh, work to get to know each other and the community and pray for our neighbors as well. I'm sure I'm skipping things on my list, even though it's written down. Uh, other deadlines coming up in the next couple of weeks. Poinsettia orders for Grace are due on December 1st. And... At Holy Communion, Hanging of the Greens is Tuesday, November 26th at 11 a.m. Uh, 
they get to decorate early. Sorry, y'all, at Grace. We will do Hanging of the Greens on December 22nd after worship. (laughs) I know, mean pastor. Are there any other announcements? I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something. Oh, out in the, in the, on the table by the double glass doors at Grace, there is a very big copy of the current directory. We want to make sure that we've got all of the right information. So please, if you are here on site today, double check your listing. And if it's correct, do a big check. And if it's not, in red pen, make the correction of what you want listed in the directory. And then the last thing we need to do is check worship servers for the next couple of, couple of weeks. So next week, we need an usher and an acolyte. Thank you. Kathy Rokitsky, are you in it? Great. And then what about the following week? Just because I know people are going to start traveling. December 1st, we will need an usher, an acolyte, an assisting minister, and a communion assistant. Whatever. So all of them. Um, yeah. Is that what you said, Usher? I will assist. Thank you. I'll be the Annette will be communion assistant. Annette Fillmore. What does that still leave us? That's fine. Yeah. December 1st. Okay. So we're good. For the next two weeks. Wonderful. We have a tradition here at Grace of welcoming first time in person visitors with a number of goodies. So, Gretchen, you've been standing there for a long time waiting. Shelly? Yeah. Shelly has not been here before, has not gotten a love loaf, correct? Okay. Beth, thank you for, br- they're over here, for, for bringing your longtime best friend. Did I get that term correct? Yes, it's good to have you with us. We have not yet figured out how to give out love loaves over the internet, so the best we can do is to encourage you to fill out the digital visitor card, and there is an, it, that is good for both congregations, Grace in Chesapeake and Holy Communion in Portsmouth. It's just an option on the form which one you want to connect with, um, and we would love to connect with you if you have any questions or want to get involved. Uh, anything else? then let us stand as we are able and sing our sending song, which is number 723 from the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. 723. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is raised. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart cries out, bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws me, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart cries of the day you bring, let your fires of the justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. 
Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart will sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's rushing grass. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart will sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away your tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Go in peace, encourage one another in Christ. Thanks be to God.